Welcome back, everybody. In this video, we're going to be looking at the Calculate Table Revisor, which is a revisor that uh, when you're uh, new, you actually probably won't use it uh, a whole lot. However, when you get more advanced, you will use it more and more. And I think it's, it's such an important revisor, such an important function, that I really want to introduce it early on, even if just a little bit, which is what we're going to be doing here today. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Uh, I'm here in Filter Revisors Part 1.xlsx, and I'm in the Calc tab, uh, tab, or Calculate Table, right, short version of that. And so here we've got uh, a snippet of code, right, where uh, we're not using Calculate like we've been using before. We're using Calculate Table. Now, uh, the only real difference here is that uh, with Calculate, the sub-expression is going to be a sub-expression that returns a single scale or a single number, or a single text string, or a single date, or a single time, or a single date time, a single value. Uh, here, our sub-expression, uh, here, values, pointed at that column, this is going to return uh, an entire temp table, and therefore we can't use regular calculate, we have to use calculate table. Why? I don't know. Those are just the rules that you have to follow. Okay. So if your sub-expression returns a scalar, use calculate. If it returns an entire temp table, use calculate table. Other than that, it's pretty much the same thing. So uh, whenever we see a revisor, such as uh, calculate or calculate table or a measure, whatever one it is, we always want to immediately find the sub-expression and freeze it with our eyeballs, right? Because we want to practice remembering that the sub-expression is the thing that's going to happen after the revisor revises the filters. So the sub-expression is right there. It's argument one of calculate table, right? Everything before that comma right there. So uh, let's go ahead and freeze this. And now you, uh, when you're writing code in the real world, you have to freeze it with your eyeballs. I'm going to freeze it with the magic of Excel by selecting those cells, uh, right-clicking, and uh, hey, I've even got the right color already uh, ready for me. But I'm going to click on here and make it that shade of blue. Okay, brr, cold, frozen. So we've frozen the first, um, the first argument of calculate table, which is its sub-expression, the thing that will happen after we revise the filters. How are we going to revise the filters? Well, um, we're not calling this as part of an expression column, right? There's no average X up here that it's a part of. Uh, instead, we have this override filter defined right here. Uh, and that is defined with this iterator, the filter iterator, and the uh, table column derivation. So we're going to go get all the different shifts. We're going to pass it into the filter iterator, which will just keep the lunch uh, rows, and it will produce the temp table that we want as a filter, which calculate table will then add. Speaking of which, uh, let's go ahead and get this derivation right there, all mini shift. Well, we're using the all uh, column derivation. And... Uh, Right now, there's no filters in the filter context. If it were, this would ignore them. That's what the all function does, right? As opposed to values or something like that. So let's go get all the different um, different uh, values in the shift column, regardless of filters. Well, there's lunch and there's dinner. So let's just go ahead and type those in. So here I am. I'm going to type in shift. I'm going to type in lunch. And I'm going to type in dinner, right? Now, uh, that is the, uh, the temp table that is the result of the derivation here on line 6, that table column derivation all the values of shift ignoring the filters. We're then going to take that temp table and pass it into the filter iterator, which is going to add this expression column to it and just keep the true results. Speaking of which, I've actually already got the hard work done. I'm going to type in exp, and you'll notice I've got the formula pre-populated. As soon as I hit enter, there we go. For each and every row, check to see if that row shift is equal to lunch. Uh, lunch does equal lunch, so we get a true. Dinner does not equal lunch, so we get a false. So what does the filter iterator do with this expression column? It just keeps the true row, specifically that lunch row right there. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to type in shift, and we're going to get lunch. And that is going to be our override filter. So this temp table right there is the result of lines 5 through 8. Calculate table will then say, okay, I know what to do with temp tables. I add them to the filter context, to create a revised filter context. And that's what we're going to do, or I guess that's what calculate table is going to do. We're going to act like calculate table and do that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select this temp table right here, and I'm going to pretend I'm calculate table for a second. I'm going to move my, uh, my cursor right there so I get the arrows. I'm going to left click and drag up here to the filter context. Uh, now, it's more accurate to say that I move it, but I like to make a copy of it. That way I can see it in both places. So I'm going to hold down control to get the little plus symbol, and I'm going to let go. Boom. Now I've I really I've moved it, uh, but it's kind of visually I've made a copy of it. So I took the temp table that was here, and I moved it into the filter context to create a revised filter context, right? So uh, if there were other override arguments, we would add those, but there's not. There's just the one. So we're actually done revising the filter context. And with that in mind, let's actually filter this down to just look at lunch. There we go. Now we're just looking at lunch. 
Ah, that's what the data model looks like with this filter context in place. Cool. So now calculate table is done revising the filters. Our model kind of looks like this. We could go ahead and unfreeze our sub expression and run it. So I'm going to go ahead and select this code right, uh, those cells right there specifically. I'm going to right click and I'm going to change the background to sort of this dark color. Er, I threw it in the microwave for 30 seconds. What was cold is now kind of dripping wet. Kind of left that sort of uh, mark on the table underneath it, right? Okay, so that is our sub expression. This is what we're going to run with these filters in place or filter singular, okay? So uh, what are all the values of dish? Well, uh, a minute ago when we were looking at lunch and dinner, it was pasta, burger, and salad. But if you notice that we're now that we're looking at lunch, uh, nobody ordered a lunch, uh, a salad for lunch. Everybody was being very unhealthy. So now uh, when we run this sub expression, right, it's not going to return a, a single scalar value. It's just going to return a, an entire temp table. So go get all the visible values of dish. Now down here, we use the all column derivation. So it ignore the filters. Up here, we're using the values column derivation, which respects the filters. It's a respectful derivation. So go get all the visible uh, values in the dish column, right? Pasta and burger, okay. So I'm going to type in dish, pasta, and burger, burger, and hit enter, uh, and that's it, right? Now, uh, that is actually the result. Unlike before, where calculate table returned to scalar, this is going to return a temp table. So this is going to be what the actual uh, result of this snippet of code is right there. Now, uh, before I, I guess, drag it down there on top of itself, uh, I'll, I'll remind everybody that revisers are excellent roommates, which means they always clean up after themselves. So now the calculate table has revised the filters and run this sub-expression, before it returns this value, it's actually going to set the filters back to the way it found it, right? Now, uh, the way it found it was uh, empty. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, do Control-C, got my little eraser right there. I click on those cells. I do control V to paste and now calculate table is done setting the filters back to the way it found it. It could go ahead and take this value and uh, return it. So I'm going to click there and just to kind of simulate what it might look like. I'm going to left click and drag. I'm just going to drop it right on top of the other one. There we go. Hey, it's kind of the same thing. Okay. So uh, this returns that temp table right there, right? Different than before returning a temp table, not a scalar, not a single value, like a number or something like that. Okay. So, hey, we reset the filters back. I probably should have uh, reset this a second ago as well. That's fine. I'm quite bad at that. You may have noticed that by now. Okay, good. Let's do one more example. Let's do one more example. Okay. So here we're going to run the exact same code uh, twice, the exact same snippet of code twice, but we'll see, um, we'll see that the behavior is going to be different on lines 3 through 6 than it is on lines 8 through 11, even though uh, it's the exact same snippet of code, right? Filter, values, dish, dish equals salad. That's true there and right there. This is exactly the same as that, right? And uh, I'll say they're actually going to spit out the same result, but the process is going to be slightly different. The intermediate steps will be slightly different. So uh, I'll give you about two seconds if you want to guess as to how. Just think about it for a second. Looking at the shapes we see over there, how do you think this is going to be different? How do you think this is going to be different? Okay, your two seconds are up. If you want more time, you can hit the pause button on YouTube. Uh, now let's go ahead and actually evaluate the thing. Okay, so here we've got our calculate table, right? Whenever we see a revisor, uh, and calculate table is a revisor, the first thing we want to do is find that sub expression and freeze it with our eyeballs. And if you happen to be in Excel, you can freeze it by changing the background color. So I'm going to select this sub expression right there. It's everything before that first comma. It's the first argument of calculate table, right? If it were calculate, it would be the first argument of calculate. This is calculate table, so it's the first argument of uh, calculate table. And let's freeze it. So I'm going to right click on those cells, and I'm going to click on my little paint roller, or my paint bucket guy right there, and I'm going to select that blue color. Brr, cold. Frozen in a big block of ice. Big block of ice. So we're only going to uh, unfreeze and run this after uh, we revise the filters, right? So calculate table says, I want to run this after I revise the filters. How am I going to revise the filters? Well, that's lines 8 through uh, 11 right there. Okay. So uh, what are we going to do this time? Well, this time uh, we're going to use the uh, values column derivation to go get all the visible values of the dish column, respecting the current filters. Up in the previous example, this didn't say values. It said all, which meant that it ignored the filters. Here we're going to do kind of the more unusual approach where we pass the filter iterator the uh, values column derivation, right? So what are all the visible uh, values of dish? Well, there's no filters in place, so we actually get the same result if, as if we were using all, right? So we say, uh, yeah, there's no filters in place. Okay, well, if there's no filters in place, uh, what can I see? I see pasta, burger, and then down there I see salad. Okay, so the derivation right there, 
the derivation right there is going to produce a temp table that looks like this. It's going to have pasta, it's going to have burger, and it's going to have salad. There we go, all three of them, right? Because there's no filters in place. Okay, we then pass that into the filter iterator, which is going to add this expression column to the temp table and then just keep the true results, right? That's what the filter iterator does. And thankfully, uh, because I'm lazy, I've already done the hard work. I type in exp, and as soon as I head under, we'll see that those values are already pre-populated. Does uh, pasta equal salad? Uh, no, it does not. Does burger equal salad? I wish that it did, but it does not. Uh, sadly, if you want to be healthy and have a salad, only salad equals salad. So this is the only row where we get a true. We get a false, a false, and a true. What does the filter iterator do with this expression column? It just keeps the true rows, which is just that row right there. So the whole thing, this bit right there, is going to produce a temp table that looks like this. Dish equals salad. There we go. So now we've got uh, that temp table. That is the result of lines 8 through 11. Calculate table says, hey, I know what to do with uh, temp tables. I know exactly what to do with temp tables. I'm going to create a revised filter context with those temp tables, right, as an override filter. Okay, so calculate table takes this table, and it's going to create a new revised filter context with it. So I'm going to move my mouse till I get the little cardinal arrows right there. I'm going to left click and drag up here. And uh, it's more accurate to say that I move it, but I like making a copy. That way I can see it in both places. So I hold down control and I go ahead and let go, right? Again, really, it's more like I moved it, but I like seeing it in both places. So I made a copy of it, right? So there we go. So calculate table has taken that temp table right there. Added it to the filter context, create a new revised filter context. And in this revised filter context, we don't see all the dishes. We only see the one lone sow, the one person who decided to be healthy all day long. We see just that one transaction. Okay, good. So now, uh, this is the revised filter context within which calculate table will run its sub-expression. So uh, let's go ahead and unphrase the sub-expression and run it, even though it's the same code as right there. Let's see how it behaves slightly differently. You may already have a guess. So I'm going to select the big block of ice, throw it in the microwave for 30 seconds, and that will unfreeze it and leave a little puddle behind it. There we go. Okay. So I've unfrozen my sub-expression. I can now run it under this new revised filter context. Well, what am I going to do? Well, the instructions are exactly the same. The instructions are exactly the same. However, notice the derivation will produce very different results. Down here, the derivation uh, values mini dish produced a temp table with one, two, three records. Because a minute ago, we didn't have any filters in place. Now we've got a filter for dish equals salad, right? So with this filter for dish equals salad in place, the exact same instructions, I repeat, the exact same instructions will return, will return a different temp table. Specifically, it's going to return all the visible values of dish. Um, I should say all the visible values in the dish column, right? And if you look at dish, well, there's just the one. So unlike, uh, it's not going to produce three, it's just going to produce a single row, single column temp table that looks an awful lot like this. So I type in dish, I type in salad, and that's it. So the derivation on line four, the same derivation as on line nine, right? The same code produces a different result. Now we're just gonna get the uh, single salad row. And now uh, what do we do with the results? Well, it may seem kind of moot at this point, uh, but you know it's gonna do exactly what we asked to do. So we take that temp table right there, we pass it into the filter iterator, we add an expression column, we check to see uh, if each row's value of dish is equal to salad, and we just keep the true rows, right? So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to type in exp, exp, and when I hit enter, uh, we see there's only one row to check, and on that one row, does the, <clears throat> does the dish equal salad? Uh, well, it does, right? Does the dish equal salad? It does, so we get a true. So what does the filter iterator do? Well, uh, if this were a false, it would actually return a temp table with no rows, but this is a true, so it's going to basically just make an exact copy of that table right there. It will be identical. Dish equals salad. There we go, and that is the result of the filter iterator right there, which is the sort of the last step in our sub-expression. So this is going to be what the answer is, which is why it looks like that down there. But before, before calculate table returns it, before I click on this and drag it down there, uh, what I want to do is remind everybody that uh, revisors are excellent roommates, and calculate table is a revisor, which means it's an excellent roommate, which, bef which means uh, that before returning the value, it's going to clean up after itself. It's going to set the filter context back to the way it found it. So uh, right now, with the filter context, this revised filter context that it created has this filter for dish equals salad. Uh, and so Calculate will say, let me set that back. I'm going to click on that, Control-C. I click over here, and I do Control-V to paste. There we go. And now we're no longer just looking at salad. We're kind of looking at everything. I'll just click on those and those. There we go. 
There we go. So now the filter contest is set back the way uh, the calculate table found it. Uh, with that done, calculate table can then take this this temp table, temp table value, right, or table value, and uh, it's going to return it. So to simulate that, I'm going to select it, left click and drag, and I'm going to hold down control, just drop it over here where I already had the answer. There we go. Okay, so this returns the temp table. So uh, what's the difference between calculate and calculate table? I mean, not very much. The only difference is that calculate table is what you use when your sub-expression is a sub-expression that returns a temp table. And for new users, you won't actually do this a ton. Uh, as you get more advanced, you will do it more and more. So it's a good thing to at least see right now. Uh, if only because uh, of the following, right? Uh, being able to understand calculate table will help you see some of the uh, symmetry that exists in the language. Just how beautiful it is, right? Just how, how small and compact and elegant it is as a language, okay? So let's think about our revisers here for a second, right? Well, there's three of them. There's calculate, there's calculate table, and any measure. There's, there's a couple others that exist in the language, but these are the three common ones, the ones that we want to focus on by far the most, okay? So how do they differ? Well, the most boring one, um, probably also the most useful, but the, maybe the most uh, plain one, the, mo the least interesting one. Oh, I don't even know if that's correct, too. The simplest one is the calculate function, right? Now, uh, all of the revisers create a revised filter context. Then within it, they run their sub-expression to create a new value. With uh, calculate, the value type that it produces is a scalar, a single number, a single date, or a single uh, string of text, right? So uh, if you want to create a single number, a single date, or a string of text, you can use calculate or you can use any measure. The difference is, the difference is with calculate, the sub-expression that it runs is defined in argument one of calculate. So when you call the function, you have to tell it specifically uh, what's the sub-expression you want to run under that revised filter context. This is different than any measure, not some measures, not a couple measures, any measure, right? Any measure, uh, like calculate, will return a single number, single date, or single text string, a scalar, if you want to use that fancy term, right? The difference is, with uh, calculate, the argument is defined, uh, I should say, the sub-expression is defined in argument one. With a measure, you define that sub-expression in the data model. Other, other than that, they're very, very close. Very, very close. So uh, you could use a measure to say, hey, uh, I, there's this, basically there's almost like a calculate function uh, that's going to have this sub-expression that I'm going to call over and over and over again. So I'm going to define a measure. That way I can just ask for it by name. I don't have to rewrite it over and over and over again by hand and maybe make a mistake or something like that. Okay. Now, that's the difference between uh, measures and calculate, just uh, where the um, sub-expression is defined. With calculate, it's in argument one. With measures, it's within the data model, right? It's anything after that equal sign when you define the measure. So what's the difference between calculate and calculate table? Well, I just showed it to you, and it's actually kind of intuitive. But, uh, you know, just so we can see it here on the graph, right? Uh, both of them have their sub-expression defined in argument one. Whether you use calculate or calculate table, the thing that you're going to run into the revised filter contest is in argument one, right? Uh, which means the override filters are arguments, you know, two, three, four, five, whatever, right? So what's the difference? Well, uh, with calculate, it's going to create a single number, single date, or single text string. If you want to return an entire temp table, that's what you use calculate table for. Otherwise, there's very little difference between these things. Now, this begs the question, hey, Brian, hey, Brian, what is the name of the thing uh, where uh, it's a revisor, it returns a temp table, and uh, its sub-expression is defined in the data model. What's this mysterious block down here? What is that called? Uh, it is called Sir Not Appearing in this picture, uh, which is my uh, 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 a movie reference way of saying uh, doesn't exist. As of right now in DAX, there's no way of doing this. So if you want to define what some people might call a table value measure, a measure that returns a table uh, rather than a single scalar, right now it doesn't exist. Right? right now it doesn't exist. And that's okay. You actually end up not needing it very much. Uh, but it's interesting to think about sort of the, the, the these, this sort of plane of understanding, right? Where you've got on the x-axis uh, the value type. Do I return a single value, a scalar, or do I return a temp table? And then uh, on the y-axis, where is that sub-expression argument? And if you could see it in that light, you just understand how very, very close uh, these three operations are to each other. Okay, that's enough on that. I probably bored the heck out of everybody in the last five minutes. Hopefully you thought that was interesting, though. If you didn't think it was interesting, I do at least hope it was helpful. And by the way, I will see you in the next video.